Hi, so today I'm going to take you through creating a new project using the Vivado Design Suite. I'm going to use VHDL to design a simple half adder, and we're going to program it onto our Zybo development board. So the first thing you want to do is you come over here to select Create New Project, which will bring up the new project wizard. And here you can name your project whatever makes sense to you. And you want to leave this checked off, it'll keep all of your source files organized in the same directory. Here you want to make sure RTL project is selected, and for this project we're going to leave do not specify sources at this time selected, and uh, we're just going to create all of our sources once we get into the main project. Now here, if you have gone and downloaded the Zybo board files and you've added them to Vivada's library, you can actually just come right over here to boards, and it's listed right here. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, you can actually search for the actual chip on the board, the zinc chip using parts and using these filters here. And here's the chip right here. So I do recommend that you go and download that board file as soon as you can. Though The link and instructions on how to do that are provided in the description below this video. All right, so just make sure that all looks good and then we move on to creating our actual project. Alright, so this is our main project window. Um, over here in the left is our flow navigator. It has all the tools we'll need for development, everything from simulating to synthesis to implementation to programming. So this is very important for the entire design flow. So here in our project manager, you'll notice in the sources window here, we have all these empty folders because we haven't made any sources yet. So the first thing we want to do is want to go and create those sources. So you come over here, click on add sources and leave it at creating design sources and come up here and go to create file now we're making a half adder so go ahead and name your file that make sure it's VHDL and then hit finish and I'll bring up the define module window so here you can change the name of the entity the architecture or, uh, architecture if you want the main thing that's important about this window is this is where you can define all of your input and output ports so we're making a half adder, which means we want two inputs and we want two outputs. So we got input A and B, and we want our sum to be an output and carry. So also for the outputs, change your direction to out. All right, so now you'll see right here, we have our source file. And this little symbol right here means it's a top level file. It's not really relevant for this project, but later on when you have multiple files and you're having to deal with a hierarchical structures, that's going to be very important. So double click on that, it opens up over here for editing. So we have all of our ports to find the entity, we have our architecture started. Main thing we want to do here is just add some data flow statements. So we're going to add sum equals, this is basically assigning these values here to this output port. And then for carry, we would like a and B. All right. So all these little pieces here in purple, they're not really case sensitive. The port names, however, are case sensitive. So if you name something all lowercase here, then you add a capital S here, this isn't going to work. Same goes for when we make a constraint file, which is what we're going to go and do next. So this is all set now. Go ahead and save that. And now we're going to come back over here to add sources. And instead, we're going to do add or create constraints. And then this time, we're going to add files. Now, this is under the assumption you've gone and downloaded the Zybo Master XDC file from Xilinx's website. If you haven't done that, go to the website. That link is also provided uh, in the description below. And go ahead and download and then navigate to it and add it here. Now, something you want to make sure you do is you have copy constraint files into project. What that means is it's going to make a copy in your subdirectory. If you don't select that, then any changes you make to this file are going to affect the original file. And if you've done the same thing with other projects you've used with it, then those are also going to have their constraint file changed, which is could completely destroy your project because the constraint file is what tells the program where to assign the ports to actual physical pins on the board. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. And now that's in our folder here. 
So it has a list of all the pins on the Zybo board. So to use this, all we need to do is find the pins that we want to use for our ports. So we want to use switch 0 and 1 for our inputs here. That's these two right here. We want to uncomment them. And we want to change the port names. So I'm going to name my switch 0 to B. And switch 1 to A. All right, then for my outputs, I want to use LEDs 0 and 1. So I find those right here. And I'm going to make LED 0 sum. And LED 1 carry. So you can see this is a really simple way to make your constraint file. It's really convenient just to have all these put here, made available for us. So that's all set. Go ahead and save. Now all of our source files are finished for this particular project. Now it's just a matter of confirming that our design is accurate and then programming it. So to begin confirming that all the logic looks good, I'm going to come down here to open a library design. It's going to open up a schematic of what it sees in our VHDL file. And this is a good way to make sure that our logic is all sound. It's also essentially a way that Vivado compiles your code. So if you make any changes to your VHDL after you've gone through this process, you can just come right back over here, right click, and you can do reload design. So here's our schematic of our half adder. You can see everything uh, looks like it's working well. Our carry goes through the AND gate, some goes through the XOR gate. So we can move right along to our simulation. So come back over here, run simulation, and run behavioral simulation. And then all of these processes are each going to take a few moments. The more complex your project, the longer it'll take. So what we have here is a basically a timing diagram. So go ahead and just make things a little more visible. So what this means is we don't actually have any inputs going in yet. I mean, we have all these ports here, but no signals going in. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate our own inputs. So first you want to come up here and restart. That sets the clock back to zero. And then come over to your input port and right click and go with a force clock. I'm going to bring this down to 10 nanoseconds. And then come over to B, right click, force clock. And we're going to set that to 20 nanoseconds. We're basically staggering these inputs because you want a combination of different inputs so we can see all the possible outputs. So now that we have that, we see this is at 40 nanoseconds, which is perfect. It'll give us all four combinations that we need. Come over here, it'll run it for the time set here. And so right now it's zoomed in a little too far, so we can't really see a good image. So we'll come over here to zoom the fit. And so we now we see exactly from 0 to 40 nanoseconds, and it all looks really good. So just look at like a timing, uh, timing diagram or a truth table. Everything follows how it should. So that all looks good, which means we can move on to actually programming the board. So first we're going to come down here to synthesis. Now what this is going to do is it's going to... Oh, so we're synthesizing the program, and if you run into any errors here, usually it's due to some syntax error in your VHDL code. Say you forgot a semicolon, or if one of your ports is capitalized when it should all be lowercase. Little things like that. I mean, some of those things can make it past the, the simulator, but they won't make it past synthesis. And then this can also take a few seconds. Alright, so everything completed, no errors or warnings. So I'm going to go straight to run implementation. Now, this is what the implementation is going to do is it tries to fit everything out on the board. So if something is wrong with your constraint file, that's where you're going to see errors here. And then also sometimes if something's up with your clock, you may run into errors here as well. You can also come down here to the log. You can check the progress of any of the processes you're running. So we could have done this for the synthesis, for the uh, the simulation initially. Any of the longer processes, you can actually check the log and see as it's moving through. 
then if any errors or warnings pop up, you can come over to messages and you can actually see what they were. And so if you run into a syntax error during the synthesis, you can come over here and you go to, do, do, do. you want to go down to synthesis. And if there were any specific errors or warnings, you can click on it and it'll bring you to the line where that error or warning showed up. All right. And then so once our implementation is done, so we have two warnings here. You want to let me first go and get the bit stream starting uh, generating. Now warnings aren't always like a sign of horrible things to come. Sometimes it's just a like let's see for it's probably something about timing. Yep, we didn't define any timing constraints mainly because our project doesn't need timing constraints. So it's going to give you that error regardless. Once you move on to clocks naturally that should disappear or if you mess up your clock that's going to turn into an error and not a warning all right and then so while our bitstream is generating the next part is going to require that your zybo board is actually connected and hooked up to your computer so we're going to open hardware manager and then i'm going to pause to give you a quick instruction on how to actually set your board up so this is the zybo board right here there's two main parts that you need to pay attention to while you're setting the board up, and then another part that could be important once you start programming the board. So the most, imp well, one of the more important parts is this corner right here, the upper left corner. So let me bring up a zoomed in image. So what we have here is we have the micro USB port, which is how you connect your board to the computer. And uh, in its current default setting, this jumper set right here, it's also where your computer gets, uh, it charges your board from. So you can charge your board from the computer, you can charge it from a wall adapter. All that's determined based on what that setting of those jumpers is. So if you don't want to charge your computer with, your, sorry, if you don't want to charge your board with your computer, you can actually change that jumper setting so it'll charge from a wall adapter, which you should have also received in your kit. To do that, you just take these this cap here and put it on these upper two pins, just like it shows you right here. So if you go ahead, oops, sorry, if you go ahead and do that, you just plug your wall adapter in here, and then flick the switch, and your board is all set, or at least it's all powered on, anyways. Now for programming your board, there is one second. Let me just get this. All right, so for programming your board you want to pay attention to this section right here. This set of jumpers determines the boot mode of your Zybo board. In its default setting, that QSPI, it's going to try and boot off of the QSPI flash onboard memory. So we don't want to do that. We want it to wait for a computer to send it instructions or a program and then boot from that. So what you want to do is you want to take this cap here and you want to move it to these two rightmost pins. So once you do that, the board's all set to be programmed. So you can go ahead and do that. Make sure your board is turned on and the red light appears. And then you can go ahead and come back to the Vivado program. So once all that's set up, come back here and click open target. And we're basically telling the computer where to send the code. It doesn't know on its own. So you come down here, open new target. Make sure that's his local server. And it detects our board. So if you didn't have it turned on or plugged in correctly, it would give you an error saying, um, oh, we didn't detect anything. So make sure all that's set up correctly. You want to come down here, select the zinc chip, hit next, make sure that all looks good. This should be the same. That's going to be different for every computer. Hit finish and we're good to start programming our board. Just gotta wait for it to come here. So go to program device, click on the zinc chip. We are not putting any debug probes in, so go ahead and hit program. And once this is done, a green light should come on your board. Should look like this. That means the program is finished loading onto your board, so you can go ahead and start playing with your switches. And the LEDs should light up according to how we program them. If you have that working fine, then you are all set to go. Thank you for watching this tutorial and we'll be back with more.